Oh man, I'm glad you're here. I couldn't wait any longer. I am so eager to share this information I got for you today. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the end of the week. It's Friday, October 7th. Enjoy your weekend. Rest up. So what we're going to do on this show is we're going to focus in on OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that have potential, stocks that can make us some money. Now, when I say we're going to look at OTC and penny stocks, I'm not repeating myself and being redundant. There is a difference. OTC stocks are the ones we're primarily looking at, but we could easily be looking at stocks on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange because the actual definition of a penny stock is any stock under five bucks regardless of what market they're sold on. And to be completely honest, I prefer, yeah, prefer to trade penny stocks on the major exchanges for a couple of really great reasons. One, that's where all the money's at. This is where the whales are at, the hedge funds, the institutions. You want to make big money, you got to be in the same room with big money. The second reason, they're free to trade. There are no transaction fees when you're trading on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. And that doesn't just save you money, it gives you freedom to trade the way you want to trade. For example, let's say you bought a thousand shares of a stock you like at one dollar a share. The price jumps up to a buck ten and then just kind of freezes there. Nobody's bidding, no volume. Well, what's stopping you? You can buy it for free. And you only need to buy one share to kick the price up. Now, true, you're paying a dollar ten, and you paid a dollar for your other shares, so you're paying more for it. <laughs> but you're only buying one, and not only are you kicking the price up on the chart, but more importantly, you just kick the price up on all your stock by whatever you kicked it up. That's the freedom you get with no transaction fees. Now, as I said, most of the stocks we look at are on the OTC market. Matter of fact, all that news right there comes from the OTC market the last five days. That's news I've personally looked at and I'm sharing with you. Now, the oldest is up at the top, newest is down here at the bottom. Now, don't just glance at it. No, I want you to look at that news. I put in a lot of work to share this with you. I want you to get as much information as possible with the little time we share together. So, if you need to pause me to... Fooled you. <laughs> If you need to pause the show to get the information, do it. I'm not going to take offense, believe me. And better yet, if you need to rewind, that does my Google algorithm even better. So go for it. Now, when I do my research on OTC stocks, this is the site I come to 100% of the time. At least this is where I start all the time. The OTCmarkets.com website. Now, the reason I do come here isn't because it's free. That's good. It's not because I don't have to sign in. No passwords. No hassle. I love that. No, no, no. It's really about current information. This site is the only site on the entire internet that I'm aware of that is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC for every single OTC stock. What more could you ask for? I mean, honestly, what's the point of going searching for information when you know where it's at? Do you look around your kitchen for the milk or do you just go to the refrigerator when you know that's where it's at? Right? Duh. So, make life simple. Seriously, start here at the OTC markets. If you can't find what you want, then go out to the internet and do your searching. So, let us take a look at how the OTC market finished today. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this because it does not refresh automatically. All right, we've got our most current numbers here. Some things do look better today, actually. We've kind of come up across the board. Our dollar volume, I do believe, was like 1.6 or 1.4 billion the other day. We're up to 1.7. Nothing to get excited about, but it is going up. Share volume, well, I'll get a little excited about this. That's a double digit. We've got to at least be over 10 billion. I mean, think of it as getting out of bed and getting dressed. Under 10 billion, you're not even dressed, let alone out of bed. So we are over 10 billion. We haven't been doing that very often, just a few times a month. So that's kind of exciting. <laughs> and our trades, well, we are closing in on that 300,000 mark again. We are stuck between 250,000 and 300,000. Just keep bouncing back and forth. We did break 300,000 once. I think it was, well, within the last seven days. And it looks like we're about ready to do it again. So if we keep tapping on it, we may actually be working our way up to get above it. Let's keep our fingers crossed. So what I want to do today is I want to share with you certain types of stocks that can make you huge gains. I mean big gains, maybe a few hundred percent, 
maybe a few thousand percent, maybe tens of thousands of percents. What am I talking about? Tier change. You come over here, folks, this information is available to you every single day before the bell rings, which is very critical to these plays, very critical. Come down here to Corporate Actions, right there, click it, brings you to this page. Now, there's a lot more information on this page than you can actually see because they hide it behind the tiny arrows. I didn't know about this for a long time. Right here, it says Symbol Changes. There's a little arrow there. If you click it, you get a menu. And this menu has a lot of different information here. Company name changes, splits, halts, ex-dividends, caveat emptor, and the one we're looking for, tier changes. Now, tier changes is when a company moves from one tier to another tier on the OTC market. Now, they got three tiers, basically. I guess you could say they've actually got four or five tiers, but their basic tiers are pink, which is the bottom, the basement of the OTC market. Uh, this is where you'll find a lot of your ghetto stocks down there because they use disclosures. They're just giving us numbers through the management, not a CPA or anything like that. So you got to be careful with pinks. QB is the middle tier. The B stands for better. It's better because you have to audit your financials to be on the middle tier. And the top tier, the best tier is the QX and they call it the best tier. And what makes it best is they give all the information they have about the company out to their investors. They are so transparent, they could easily be on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. Why aren't they? Most of them are either banks and they have incentives to stay down here or they're foreign companies. Foreign companies can't go on the major exchange, which is why you have Heineken, Nintendo, EasyJet, uh, L'Oreal. All these companies are down here on the OTC market, believe it or not. So tier changes, they drop down or they come up. Now, I said there could be four or five. You have the expert market, which really isn't a tier. It's more of a penalty box. It's a time out. This is where companies go when they're late on filings. When you're late on your filing for too long, they will pull you off the open market and punish you. They won't let your shares be bought or sold and they put you on the expert market and you stay there until you get your filings caught up. Once caught up, they bring you back on the market. Well, if you're invested in that company, you're on hold. When they go on to the expert market, I mean, you could sell, but here's the problem. Let's say the stock is two cents they get late on their filings, don't catch up in time, and get pulled down to the expert market. It doesn't stay two cents. You and I cannot buy the shares, but they can still be bought behind the scenes by brokers and marketers. Now, I don't know why they do this, but they annihilate the price of virtually all the stocks that come into that ring. It's like a lion's den. They just tear up the price. It will go, if it was two cents, it'll go down to triple zero two or 402, maybe even 502. Unbelievable. But when it comes back on the open market, it has to be at least 0001. That's the cheapest you can buy any stock. And that's where they end up coming back on the market. Somewhere really dumb cheap, 0003, 0004. But here's the great news. This is the exciting part. If the stock was at two cents before it got pulled off the market, that was the esteemed value by the investors before it went away. When it comes back on way down here at this itty bitty cheap ass price, where do you think it bounces to? goes right back to two cents. And normally, because it's so far down, it overshoots, wham, and goes up to three or four cents and then falls back down. There are some huge gains when these stocks come back onto the open market from the expert market and get moved up to pink or pink limited. Really doesn't matter. As long as they get off the expert market, you see these huge jumps. But you don't just see it with the expert market. You'll also see it with pink limited going to pink current. Absolutely. Pink Limited is the danger zone. That's when you are late and you can't be late for too long. So when people see it go pink current, whew, we're out of the danger zone. People get excited. And today there were a couple stocks on this list that got excited. Now here's the way you play it, folks. This is today's list. It starts right there and it ends right there. Okay, that's the last one. There are about 20 of them. Now, worst come to worst, you could take these tickers, all 20 of them, and put them on your platform. Put them on a digital list so you can see the volume, you can see the prices. Now, I have done that with this list today. And a lot of these stocks 
aren't even on the market. There's just no charts for them. So that makes your list get smaller, right? That's all I'm saying. Only look at the ones you need to look at. So then you end up with this list of stocks that are on the market trading that just had tier change. And of course, you only want up tiers, expert to pink, pink limited to pink, even gray market. Gray market is bad, bad, bad. So if you come off the gray market to pink, that's good. Very good. But if you see something like pink limited, ah, uh ah, -uh, they were late. They fell down to the expert market. No, of course you don't want to watch that. It's not even tradable. So you get your list of the stocks that have moved up, put them over there, and then you watch for volume. Then you watch for chart activity and you make your decision to get in just after the bell. After the bell, you look at that list and what, what do we got here? 20. We're going to take off the negative ones that fell. There's probably five of those. We're down to 15. I looked at a bunch of them. There's about five or six that didn't have charts. Now we're down to nine to 11. So that's your list. 9 to 11 that you're going to watch in the morning. And I tell you what, one, two, or three of them are going to bounce. Maybe a little, and when I say a little, I mean a couple hundred percent, or maybe a lot. And that's just mind boggling, whatever a lot is. Fact of the matter is, I got a video out there, folks. I was monitoring the expert markets and I was telling everybody, this company was late on filing. I see all their filings are caught up. Looks like they could come onto the market anytime. Let's keep an eye on this. And that's all you could do. You didn't know when the door was going to open. So you literally had to watch the stock. Well, it came on the market the very next day. I'm not quite sure when. I didn't see it. But it jumped from a super cheap price up to its normal price and passed it. I predicted it was going to hit 17,000%. That's what I said to everybody. And that's ridiculous, right? To actually tell anybody a stock's going to go up 17,000%. Well, you know what happened? It went up 89,000%. Cross my heart, hope to die, stick a needle in my eye. That is the truth. I probably just showed you a picture of it. So there are some huge jumps. And today, with that list of 9 to 10 to 11, there were a couple that jumped hard. And I'm going to share them with you right now. Check this one out. So this stock here is one of the stocks generated off of that tier change list today. This is ticker BABL, Build a Block Core. And this company today moved off of the expert market to the pink limited tier. Now, pink current would have been better, no doubt. But, you know, honestly, it doesn't matter what tier you land on. Not when you're coming out of the expert market. Just coming out of the dead zone back onto the open market is exciting enough. You're tradable again. And this is when you can get some huge runs. Now, I'm not saying every stock that comes off the expert market is going to run. But I am saying there's a very strong likelihood you're going to see a surge you don't normally get to see. And wouldn't you like to be a part of it? So when you see these in the list before the bell rings, grab each expert market, move to a pink, pink limited or pink regular, and bring that over to your watch list. It's worth a watch. And you may get yourself a big cha-ching one day. And you can thank me later. And Babel, Babel did not disappoint today. She finished the day at 0.012, just a smidge over a penny with over 990% gains. Now, I did see it on the list today, but I'm doing a lot, so I really wasn't focused in on this. But I did notice it later. And when I noticed it, it was at 1,300% gain. So I know she was a lot higher for the day. And when I saw it, it was because of her trades. Now, you know how I am about my trades. I like to monitor how many trades a company has. That gives me an indicator, a barometer of how many people. Well, we know for sure there couldn't have been any more than 34 people trading this stock. You can't have more people than trades, right? So a maximum of 34 could be less. We're trading this stock out of the whole country, out of everybody, only 34. And they pushed it to 1,300%. Did those 34 people know something? Are they getting ready for something? Or were they just there and made good use of it, got lucky? Hmm, it didn't take a lot to move it though, did it? Now what's most curious here is that they are still pink limited. What did we say earlier? Pink Limited means you're late on their filings and you go to expert until you get them caught up. Well, they're back up on the open market, but they are not caught up. It's like they split the difference. They do have the last years caught up, but they've got more to do. And you can't leave empty gaps in time. They must be filled. So I'm not real sure what's going on there, but I will show you what they do have left when we get over to disclosures. 
Now, they do have a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. Folks, I cannot tell you how important these are. If you're in a stock for a long hold, make sure you see these before you get in. This transfer agent, you wouldn't know what the float is without that person. Shares can't move properly without that person. So you want to see that there. But if you're day trading it, honestly, it wouldn't matter if the CEO got pulled over for drunk driving last night. It wouldn't. Not if the stock's running today for whatever reason. You're just in and out before anything matters. Now, the company is a shell company. They're not doing any business making any money. Now, they know what they want to do. They are setting up to do it, but they're not actually doing it yet and generating any money. What is it they want to do? They want to have an NFT marketplace. This is a UK registered company that provides a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace for crypto collectibles and non-fungible tokens, NFTs. This includes collectibles, gaming items, and other virtual goods transacted on Binance Smart Chain and the Ethereum blockchain. It is a complete one-stop shop for minting, trading, storing, and selling an NFT. Now, they must be serious about it, not just because they have a description, but because they have already set up a website. So, I haven't gone through all of this. It is here. I don't even know if it's fully complete, but we can see what direction they have chosen, even though they're not making any money yet. Now, there's a few other things you need to know about this company. I'm over here at their most recent annual financial report. You can take this information as gospel. First thing we need to know is they're not called Build-A-Block Corporation anymore. FKA, formerly known as. Now they are called Edge Mode Corporation. You also need to know that back in May of 2021, the courts assigned a custodian to this company. And they tell us the custodianship remains pending as of the date of this report. A custodianship is like an overseer. A supervisor, kind of. When a company's in such bad shape and normally on the expert market, the courts will appoint or someone will ask permission to take over control of getting the company healthy, getting it cleaned up, fixed up, and back on the open market the way it should be. And this one got one back in 2021 of May, and they still have it, which means the company is not in full charge of themselves right now. It's up to the custodian. They got to ask him permission to do bloody well anything. So he is still there right now. Take a look. Uh, notice here, shares in the float, 61.8 million. That's what we got in the float, and outstanding is 165. Anything else we need to know here? Well, simply that they tell us they have no operations right now. You know, nothing's happening, but obviously we see what direction they're heading. So what sort of relative volume was around this company today coming off the expert market? Well, we don't know how long she was on the expert market. So this average of 5,000 a day, if she was on the expert market for the last year, well, she's not trading on the open market, so the volume wouldn't make any difference. But they tell us that it is 5,000. That could just be one trade over the last 30 days. Today, she didn't even do a million shares. 34 trades, less than a million shares at a very cheap price. And it went up over 1,300% 1, when I saw it. So yeah, these things jump quick and fast. What is the share structure? Well, we just saw the share structure, right? 61.8 million and this is kind of curious you know i don't normally go by this number because it's outdated look at that 2014 but we just seen it was exactly that 61.8 million i normally go by the unrestricted and that's current the unrestricted shares are shares that are sold on the open market they're not restricted shares so i always equated them to be the same virtually well, there's a difference here, and even though this is outdated, this seems to be the right number right there. So, 61.8 million. Financials, well, you know they got nothing. They're a shell company. doesn't matter what button you push. They're always going to come up zeros, and you can throw three zeros behind it if you want. You're supposed to. <laughs> Disclosures. All right, let's take a look at this. Now, they are limited information. That means they're late on something. We got an attorney letter here. You got to have an attorney letter with every annual report. Here's their annual report. It came for the period of last year, November, and they just filed that here in August. So they were late. We've got a bunch of them here in August. Uh, let's see. We've got 
222, 222, 222 again, 11. All right, so all their current stuff is current. They've got everything in. What's the problem? Well, we go from the year 2021 to 2015. You can't have bald spots. Unless they were off the market, I don't think they were off the market. They've always been here through all that period. You've got five-year gap there. There are four quarterlies and an annual that have to be put out with an attorney letter with each annual. So you're looking at 28 to 30 filings that they've got to get out. they got to fill from 2015 to 2021, and then she'll go current. So they got a lot of work to do in that regard. Now, there was something else I wanted to share with you. It does not show up over here, though. We'll take a look. News. The most current news here is 2014, right there, and we got nothing else. But I did some more research and I found this. This came out September 26, 2022. Edge Mode Inc., a cryptocurrency mining and high performance computing company, they didn't tell us that, today announced it had entered into a $15 million equity purchase agreement. Edge Mode Inc. will have the right to sell up to $15 million worth of its common stock, not preferred stock, the stock you and I buy. $15 million of the common stock to alumni capital over the next 24-month period. Alumni capital is obligated to purchase shares upon receiving notice from Edge Mode as to the amount of shares and timing of the purchase. Interesting, huh? Further, any common stock that is sold to alumni capital will occur at a purchase price of 80% of the lowest daily volume weighted average price of the common stock five business days prior to the closing date. So they're always going to get it at a better price than you and us. You and us. You and me. <laughs> a better price than us. They're going to get it at a better price, but they're obligated to buy it when the company says buy it, buy it now. And chances are they'll have the company buy it when the stock is up because they get the money, right? The company gets the money, so they're not going to you know, wait till the price is down. They're going to wait for it to be really high. And then this company will get a discount for the last five days. So they'll be able to buy it down here. And the company's going to have a nice price because the price is up already. That's just the way I see it. So we have a deal here. I don't know exactly how it plays out. I don't know when they're going to ask for the money. They got any time they want in the next two years, up to $15 million. And you can follow through level two, you know, buying and stuff. And you might even be able to see, well, it's not an insider buy. So they're not going to actually list when alumni buys it. We're never going to know when alumni capital buys a stock, I think. I'm not sure. In either case, it's nice to know they got a buyer in line to buy any time they want. So that's always going to kick the price up for us. So let's go take a look at the chart and see what it looks like and see how high she did get. And see if we can figure out when she went off the market. Because there seems to be a weird gap. I can't see how she played out today. So we're taking a look at Babbel on my free trading platform. This is Think or Swim. You can get it just by going over to TD Ameritrade and sign up for their free trading account. Keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like for free. So we are looking at BABL. This is a one week, three year chart. I had to go more than a year because it actually was totally flat for the whole year. But you can see she definitely had activity before. This is back in June of last year. We hit a high of 22 cents. Then she came down in December of 2021, hit this low of 0001 and laid there for the longest time. Let's jump on down to that six month view. So this is her coming out of that. This is December. And then she had a roll here and then went flat. All of this is back in May and June. Nothing happening. We had a sell in September, late in September, another one, and then today. Today we had a huge jump, and it looks like it went from something like, uh, oh my God, I'm not quite sure what it is, triple zero something. Let's see if we can get a better look coming down to the five-day, five-minute. All right, matter of fact, I'm going to jump back 10 days, see if we can get a... All right, we got two days. Two days over the last 10 days, it was down at 0011. And it hit a high of about two and a half cents. So you're looking at 1,000, 2,000, over 2,000%, 2,300% when it hit his high. And she did fall back, gave away a lot. 
I mean, we ended up at what, 990% when she was over 2000%. But however it lays out, it seems to me that she is above her 50% mark. Half of what she threw on the table, she kept maybe even a little more. Now, do I think this is going to continue to run? Am I looking at a setup for a continuation? Not really. It's an expert play. The day they come off the market is normally what you get, and then it settles and maybe even falls after that, right? That's par for the course. Uh, the company, you know, you can do some more DD. They're obviously looking into NFTs. They are holding some debt right now, little over $2 million. They're not making any revenues. But other than that, they're a clean shell. They've just got a ton of filings to get in, about 28 to 30 filings to get out of that pink limited area and back into pink current. But other than that, no, I don't think they're going to run. But I'm trying to show you experts can be fast money in one day. But you got to get in line, take that ticker, put it right up here in your watch list. You make a watch list and throw it in here and you watch the volume, you watch the charts and you get in because you were ready. Let me show you another one that was on that list today. Here is another stock that had a great day and was generated from the list off the tier changes from today. This is ticker CRVH, Chilco River Holdings. We can see here that it moved from pink limited to pink current. Now, that doesn't normally strike up as a big deal to a lot of people, but you got to remember that Pink Limited is one step away from that slippery slope of going into the expert market where the investors can't touch their investments. So coming out of Pink Limited is coming out of the danger zone. Whew, the investor feels good. However, this company, well, it did more than expected today. She finished the day at 0 0.023 with 475% gains just for a tier change. There was no new news. There was no new filings, just a tier change. And I know it was higher than 475 earlier today. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got those precious green ticks I tell you to look for. And she too is a shell company. She hasn't got any business. She's not making any money. And I don't see any plans for what they have on their minds to do. Matter of fact, if we jump into their quarterly report, you get pieces of information like that. And I've highlighted a few pieces you should be aware of if you're thinking about the company. First off, they tell us here, mark whether the company is a shell company. Yes, they are. Make a mark whether the company's shell status has changed since the previous reporting period. Nope. And has there been a change of control? Nope. So everything is copacetic. It's the same as it was before. What else can we learn here? Well, let's see, you've got something else. Ah, yes. When you're looking at a pink, folks, the most important thing you can do research on, do your due diligence on the management. A pink, well, they normally put out disclosures, which are put out by the management. Well, they could be scamming us. They could be lying. They could not be educated. They may not have the right experience in this sector. You never know or they could have a record, or they could have had a company before that went bankrupt and all of their shareholders got screwed over. You don't know until you look into it, but you can get a heads up by reading stuff when they ask questions like, has the issuer or any of its predecessors ever been in bankruptcy, receivership, or any similar proceedings in the past five years? Yes. I don't know what this leads to, but somebody involved with them has had something happen. Just information to be aware of. We get a public float here of 10.6 million. Of all the numbers we see, float, DDC, unrestricted, this is the one you can trust the most in the disclosures. What else did I decide was important to share? Uh, they have no subsidiaries or affiliated companies with them. They stand alone. And I've always said you can tell the strength of a company by the companies that do business with them. And they've got nobody right now. I don't know a lot about the company. I'm just pointing out a few features and facts. And I think the last thing we want to look at is their assets, which are pretty much nil. They've got $56,000 now. A year ago, they had $154,000. So they've spent nearly $100,000 just paying the bills, keeping up with the rent, maybe paying themselves. And that's all that's going on with this company that I can see. What was the relative volume around the company's move? Well, they went from 1.4 
thousand shares to 1.7 million shares. Boom, boom, boom. That's over a hundred times her normal share volume. That's a big jump for a tier move. Share structure. Well, we know what it is. It was 10.4 million. Now, what do they show for unrestricted? 13. I would have been wrong. And held at DTC 10.7. That's interesting too. Now DTC, remember I was telling you about that transfer agent having to move your shares? That's the tunnel. DTC would be considered the tunnel. That's where they shuffle back and forth. And you never know how many they're going to be holding. So I'm surprised to see that number is as close as it is. But in either case, we know what the float is. 10.4. Financials, nada, right? They're a shell company, so it doesn't matter which button you push. It's always going to come up zeros. And disclosures. Well, we should be current. Everything's up, or we'd see pink limited. And nothing here in the SEC filings. And news. I don't know if they have any news at all. They got nothing going on over here. So, I don't see anything really happening with this company. She's just basically a clean shell. Now, in saying that, a clean shell is an opportunity waiting to happen. They're only here for one reason, to make money. And investors are never going to invest in the company until they're doing something, making revenues. So he, they, should be looking for an opportunity, a merger, an acquisition. That's why I said, going through their filings, I didn't see any ideas. They didn't give us any heads up of, well, we're looking for this, we'd like to do that. I couldn't find it. I didn't go through it verbatim, word for word, so there could be something in there. So more DD never hurts. All right, let's go take a look at that chart because I know it gave more than 475% on the table today. Believe it or not, that is a six-month, four-hour chart for CRVH. Not a lot of trading days and not a lot of trading on each day she was trading. And actually, this goes back further than six months. This is January 26th. That's closer to nine months. She had a couple bounces in here, but pretty much has been going sideways and falling. Hit a low bubble here uh, in June of this year, double zero three. And today, she jumped to almost a nickel. Technicals, uh, RSI is falling, your MACD is pushing up, and your PPO is pushing up. That's like the MACD. It's the percentage price oscillator. It uses a percentage of the price, or the MACD uses the whole price. I like to use both. So there looks to be potential on the four-hour chart. Let's come on down to that 20-day, one-hour. Ah, again, we only get two days. And you can see where she left off. She was at double zero four. And then she took off and she hit a high here at noon. Noon, she got almost a nickel. So you're looking at over a thousand percent gains from that right there, which looks to be where she opened, up to her high. Another one just for Pink Limited. Let's come down to the five minute, take a better look at this. So you had a bounce right at the bell. I mean, right at the bell. So if you were waiting to get into this, the first five minutes, you'd have been chasing it. You can't get in on a market order. You just can't throw your hook out there and grab a passing vehicle and get it. you got to pick a number. And let me see. It was down here, as we said, 004, and it got all the way up to whew, almost three cents in that first five minutes, folks. Wow. These can be tough to get into. I will not lie. So when she came down, better than chasing, she came sideways for a while, and then you had another burst of power here, didn't you? And she jumped again. So this might have been an easier place to get in. You'd have been in at two cents and got out up here, you know, maybe four cents. You'd have doubled your money, 100%. Now, I know that's not the thousand percent that was sitting on the table. It's not the way you wanted to play it. But are you going to complain if you make 100%? No, it doesn't matter how the play happens as long as you come out ahead in the end. Do I think this is going to continue moving up? No, we don't see any catalyst. We don't see any value. All we know is it is a clean shell company which has value to a private company that wants to go public. They could easily ask to, you know, buy or make a deal with this guy or whoever owns this company is looking to make an acquisition of their own. So they're is an opportunity that could happen, but when? I don't know, but at least they're making the effort to get off the pink limited and back onto the pink. 
Now I got something uniquely different, but could be potentially profitable. I want to share with you a couple of stocks on the expert market. They're not on the open market yet, but that's what we're talking about in this show. Preparing ourselves to grab big gains when they come back onto the open market. And if you got a watch list, it doesn't cost you anything. It's no extra work to just throw a ticker up there. And when it comes alive, you'll see it. You won't miss it. So I got two here that are on the expert market right now that have been catching activity. Marketers and brokers are buying their shares behind the scenes. They know more than we do. That's all I'm saying. I'm seeing volume. When you see volume, you pay attention. So this is Atari. Do you remember Atari? Of course you do. They still exist. And they are making money, believe it or not. They have products. They're not dead. The ticker is Pong. <laughs> Pong F, P O N G F. Now, the problem with doing any research on a expert market, they block most of the information. There just isn't a lot of information to be gotten here. Let's see what they're telling us Pong does. Uh, Pong, <laughs> Atari. Atari comprised of Atari SA and its subsidiaries is a global interactive entertainment multi-platform licensing group. The true innovator of the video game founded in 1972. Atari owns and or manages a portfolio of more than 200 games and franchises. And of course, we know their popular games, Asteroids, Centipede, Missile Command, Pong. So, Let's see what other information we can get here. Now, you're not going to get any volume, but you can get shares being bought. If you come over here to overview, right down here, trade data. This will show you trades that are happening behind the scenes, not even on the open market, but you can see if stuff is happening. And this is how I caught the 89,000 percenter. It was down at like 4502 and I seen it jump up to three cents and then fall back. And it was like, there's life. It's alive. And that's when I talked about it. And the very next day, that puppy took off. So what was this? This is uh, yesterday, uh, the day before, and today. So 18 cents, 10 cents, 18 cents. So it's jumping eight cents here. It's not big, but what I'm saying is volume. Volume is what I'm talking about here. It's been dead for a long time. It isn't trading much. So just put it on your watch list. This comes back on. Think about it. How many people know the name Atari? How many people are familiar with it? My age. You know, people who have, I'm not saying I have money, but people who have money can invest in this. So it could be very nostalgic for them just to see Atari come back on the market. And I have read some articles. They have new products out there. I think they're even working with the metaverse in some way or another. So it's worth some DD. The other one I want to share with you is also on the expert market. It's been there for a couple years. I'm very familiar with this company. This is CNTTQ. The Q means they're in bankruptcy. Uh, this is Can Trust Holdings, Inc. I'm not quite sure when the bankruptcy went into effect. I've seen a lot of activity on it today, which is why I'm talking about it. This was a huge company, folks. This was the fifth largest cannabis company in the world uh, two, three years ago. And their name, Can Trust, is what became the joke. The company had a huge factory where they were growing indoor marijuana. And you got to get a license for any room you grow in. Well, they had a spare room that didn't have a license that they decided to grow in and make some extra cash. They got busted growing grass in their legal facility because they didn't have a license for that room. Shut them down immediately. Crash and burn, folks. We lost the company. We lost the stock. The investors got screwed big time and can trust well you can see the joke now right well it was big they did have a lot of assets i don't know what's going on with the company right now but it could come back i seen the volume and if anything happens now this is a canadian company i believe let me check Yes, a Canadian company. I thought it was. This is a Canadian company, so nothing in America affects this company. None of our laws have anything to do with this company. Total separate cannabis market that is available here. Matter of fact, I think CanTrust was on the NASDAQ when it got busted. 
I think it was. So I would keep my eye on uh, CanTrust as well. When it comes on the market, a lot of people knew it as well. I don't know what it'll do. May not do anything. But it doesn't hurt to put it on your watch list. Man, that tier change list is one of my favorite places to get leads for hot stocks. And it's sitting there every single morning before the bell, like breakfast in bed. I love it. It's a predetermined list of stocks that have strong probabilities of running. You saw what an expert can do. You saw what just a pink limited to pink can do. And every single day, these opportunities are sitting there waiting for us. Now, here's the best part, and I'm going to surprise you here. I know. <laughs> you do not have to do any research or due diligence on these tickers. No, not really. All you need to do is find the ones that are going up in tiers and not down in tiers. Look for the ones being promoted, not demoted. That's it. Take the six, 10, or 20 that are on the list and put them on your watch list doesn't matter what's going on with them. You've got the list. Now you just do what you normally do. Watch that volume. Watch that price. Get in on the one that's going to give you the bank. Cha-ching. You're welcome. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.